Hey guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on DNA replication. So how DNA makes a copy of itself. Uh, so replication means to copy. It's the process of copying all of the chromosomes, or all the DNA that makes up chromosomes. Without DNA replication, a new cell would only have half of its information, and that's bad. The cell would die. <clears throat> because of the pairing, if you have uh, one strand, it's easy to predict the replication of the other strand. So if you remember back from my last video, the uh, replication laws where A goes with T and C goes with C, um, or G goes with C, you'd remember that if you had a, a strand like this, you could predict what the other half of the strand would look like. And again, A, T goes with A, A goes with T, G goes with C, C goes with G, blah, 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 blah. Um, remember, the nitrogen base, uh, bases are held by nitrogen bonds. So there's an enzyme, which is called helicase, that goes in between the, the, the DNA and unzips them like a zipper. Um, so the DNA unzips and comes apart. If we didn't do this, if you thought about it, how, how in the heck would DNA be able to replicate itself if it was, it was constantly in the state of being zipped? It's not possible. So what we, what we have to do is unzip it, expose those little rungs of the ladders there, and allow uh, 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 DNA to be replicated. So that occurs in several steps. Let's go ahead and view those steps in a second. The first step is separate the two strands of DNA. Again, uh, DNA helicase is going to be responsible for doing that. So we have this double-stranded DNA right here. We're going to zip them apart, and we are going to get two strands of DNA. Next, the original DNA strands act as templates, and the complementary nucleotides are added by this enzyme called DNA polymerase. Now, if you remember, anything that ends in ACE means an enzyme. So en enzymes are going to come through and add in complementary base pairs to every original strand. So uh, it's like laying down the other side of the story. Step three. We're going to have nucleotides connected by DNA ligase, which is like ligase, like glue, um, adds a new sugar phosphate backbone. And so um, if you look here where we have the uh, nucleotides being added, you can see here that they're not really bonded together yet. Uh, DNA ligase is responsible for binding them together, and we get that, that full two copies of DNA. Each new DNA molecule consists of one original strand and the new strand. So, once again, we have the original in dark blue, and we have the new one in the light blue here. Um, DNA, again, it codes for um, making proteins. Enzymes are special proteins. Enzymes control all of the chemical reactions. So I want to focus on for a second that uh, um, how do we sort of make proteins from DNA? Uh, proteins are made up of many amino acids. The order of nucleotides in each gene will be responsible for making up the order of each protein. So each cell contains about 8,000 genes, and that means that that cell is responsible for making about 800,000 different proteins. How does that happen? Well, first we start here with DNA. Uh, we are going to trans transcribe the DNA into RNA and eventually translate the DNA into what's called protein. So the first step is we're going from uh, DNA into RNA. So the first step is taking the DNA and making RNA out of it. Uh, one important thing to know is that RNA is, is single-stranded and it's like sort of being half of the zipper. Um, it, it contains ribose instead of deoxyribose so things are very similar so far, uh, except for the fact that RNA is single-stranded. And one important thing to know is that every time that RNA wants to be made, instead of them using a thymine, they're going to use this thing called uracil. Other than that, everything is the same between RNA and DNA. And the, the job of, of RNA is to copy DNA, and the goal is to eventually create proteins. There are three types of RNA mRNA, rRNA, and tRNA. rRNA is sort of like the messenger RNA. That's why it's called mRNA, messenger RNA. It copies DNA and sends it to the cytoplasm. Then rRNA, which the R stands for ribosomal DNA, 
works on matching the mRNA to create amino acids in the correct order. And tRNA, which is otherwise known as transfer RNA, gives amino acids to rRNA to produce protein. So tRNA is sort of like the carrier for um, any amino acid that's needed. So mRNA brings information in the form of an RNA strand from the DNA to the cytoplasm. So let's say that we have DNA here. We are going to transcribe it and we are going to bring it outside of the nucleus. Let's say that here is the nuclear membrane. We're going to bring it outside of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where it's going to exist as mRNA. And we are going to get that, um, this guy here. It's like delivering a package. What are we going to do with that package? Uh, well, we are going to give it to the ribosomes. Ribosomes are located in the cytoplasm, and they uh, attach to the mRNA and use the information in the mRNA to um, uh, start transcribing, or I'm um, sorry, translating that uh, mRNA to make a protein. tRNA, it's otherwise known as the supplier. It supplies a little piece of, uh, of, of amino acid. Um, T tRNA uh, also is shaped like a T. You can look at it here. It's sort of shaped like a T. And all of this is RNA here. But this little bit right here is a little piece of, a, of attached amino acid. And so it brings amino acids to the ribosome so it can assemble a protein. Anyway, um, this concludes the um, a DNA synthesis or DNA replication. Uh, this is Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off, folks. You all have a nice day.